that's it. Oh my god, there it is. <laughs> There's the car on the truck. <laughs> yes, that right there is in fact my Lamborghini, and never in a million of years would I have imagined I would be saying that. Now before we get into all of that, we have to back it up several years and talk about dream cars. The term dream cars has definitely been watered down across the years on YouTube, as more and more YouTubers have been able to purchase their dream cars, more YouTubers realize it's perfect for titles and getting them clicks, and even I too have been guilty of using that phrase across a lot of vehicles that, you know, have been dreams of mine, but there has always been one singular car for me that is the true dream car. Now, I've always been in the cars. I don't have an origin story of a single figure or person that really like started it all for me. I just can't ever remember a time where I wasn't in the cars. But it begs the question on what was my first ever favorite car? I was probably about nine years old when I attended an Italian car show that had a couple Ferraris, lots of Fiats, Alfa Romeos, and there was one Lamborghini that was present. And boy, was it spectacular. It was a Verde Ithaca Mercilago SV. At the time, I'd probably known of what it was, but this was definitely my first time on seeing anything of this level with my own eyes, and just to see the doors open, to see the crazy interior, that SV signature triangular logo all spread it across the Alcantara, it completely stuck with me, and from that point on, the Mercilago was always the ultimate dream. Now, to the viewers who know me, it may not be clear to some with my history of Skylines, JDM, R8s, you never would have guessed that Lamborghini was always there to begin with, but it was. You could go in my house right now, and there are model cars of Mercilagos that I've had ever since I was a little kid. My gaming videos on Forza, where we would do dream car challenges, I always wanted to use the Mercilago in them. And for a while, their values actually came down and stayed on the lower end for what they were, because they are dated Lamborghinis, and a lot of people don't want to deal with the maintenance for them. But more so recently, more and more people, I think, have learned to understand, or maybe they just always had that dream in there like me, and they've been able to finally afford afford them, so Mercilagos as a whole have been skyrocketing in value in the last several years, and of course the gated ones have also been paving the way with that. But as a kid, I never even paid attention to the fact that the car had a gated manual. In fact, I don't think I even knew what that was. It's definitely been a lot later up until now where I valued manual transmissions. But because of all of that, an LP640 with an E-gear is definitely something that is still a dream, and it's gonna save me a lot of money because, frankly, manual LP640s are unobtainium now, and they are worth as close to a million dollars. So E-gear LP640 is it, but even with settling for an E-gear, gear, it is almost impossible to find one on the market. Just scrolling through on average in the entire nation, there are usually less than just 20 Mercilagos as a whole available, and that includes SVs, pre-LPs, so even just diluted down to just an E-Gear LP640, there's probably like only ever like four on the market at once. But knowing all of this and finally just selling my Gen 2 R8 and having at least some of the cash available, I knew that, you know, if I don't do this now, I may not ever be able to do this ever again. So for the entire past summer, I have been determined to find myself one and as you guys know with the title of this video we have indeed found one however it does come with a bit of a catch it isn't exactly in this country we are about to cross through at the Canadian US border it's right there in front of us and we are going to go meet the car here. Um, just for my own memory's sake and viewers watching this, you might think the feelings of this moment are of excitement and joy, but it is probably like, it's definitely incorporated in with the most amount of stress I have ever had for, for any sort of car purchase because doing this job is, I don't know. I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm praying that this all works out and that we could bring her through. Hopefully we can come back here with her. Let's see what they gotta say. I think I just saw it just whiz by. Oh. Oh wait, no, that's a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing anything orange. The most exciting of days are always met with the biggest amounts of stress. Here goes nothing. So we are here uh, to import a car that was previously a US car and we're meeting the car. Um, they towed it in to the border here. So yeah, I need to at least get in contact with the tow truck driver because he has the bill of sale okay. and the paperwork I need to so then bring it. Up. Yes. So fourth app, turn left go over the train tracks and that'll be your next left. It's a big lot there. Okay. Say two US trucks. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Dude, I see, I see her in the mirror somewhere. It's right, oh, it's right here. It's gotta be right here. <laughs> it's right here. It. Oh my God, there it is. <laughs> here she is, ready to come back to the US. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. How's it going, I'm good. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's not the most pleasant way to do this for the first time. <laughs> my car um, it is not official yet because we are still in the wrong country uh, we are now tasked with going inside making sure we have the paperwork we got to get her from here basically just just over the fence <laughs> this isn't the best way of looking at it right now and unfortunately we've already freaking nicked the very bottom there on the tow truck that's fine we'll we'll just we'll get that all everything's a later issue right now we have very important matters of getting this car into the country we live in so fingers crossed so to begin the import process we had to go inside into u.s customs offices and present them all of the paperwork that i had an officer collected all my papers and took it to the back for a extremely long stressful 10 minutes until finally he handed me back everything he said it checked out it should look all good and i should hop in line for the border for my car to get inspected cleared all the paperwork through the customs offices and he said it, everything looks good and he advised me that now I gotta hop in line with the Lamborghini and they're just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them the situation and then they're gonna inspect the car. So far, we're, uh, we're looking good. We are in the car driving it now for the first time on this journey and uh, we are about to get in that line to see what America has to say about this freaking pumpkin. Hello. I'm here to uh, import this car in. It's a previous US car. I already went through the offices and showed them my paperwork and they told me to drive through. This was probably one of the most outlandish vehicles that Customs has ever had sitting in this position going through inspection. But basically the officer was simply looking for the federal safety regulation stamp and the USA emissions stamp. Both of course were on the car so everything was looking good to go. I once again went back inside to the customs office. The officer took my paperwork back again, set up my payment for a 2.5% import duty that I have to pay for importing any sort of Canadian car back into the US. Now this very moment was the final straight on this previous whole months long process on getting this car and making sure if it would actually be allowed back in here because if it wasn't, that would mean all of this was for nothing. But surely enough, I was able to pay the duty. He handed me back everything and we were good to go. It has never been better to see your face here in the land of the free. On the American side. <laughs> yes, sir. It hasn't even hit, like it hasn't even hit, but this is the very moment that I've been crossing my fingers for for this whole time is that the fact that we have the car on US soil and we are clear to just drive it all the way home. Dude, what do you think about all of this? <laughs> I'm just relieved. I'm as relieved as you, man. Right? Honestly, like, <laughs> I, I was pretty, you know, I was like, let's get across. Let me get <laughs> now we're, we're there now. So I'm just super happy for him because, you know, he's talked about this car for years now, like ever since he was young. Yeah. So it's just like, I can only imagine how surreal it is for you. Yeah. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is my 2009 Lamborghini Murcielago LP640 in Orancio Atlas Orange. I, I'm thinking I might call this the pumpkin because it is literally the brightest, most vibrant. I mean, you guys can see the interior here. The interior is orange as well, and it is October. So this is quite Pretty possibly fitting, the yeah. best Halloween present anyone can have. Now, I will say it has a little bit of a interesting history, and I'll make a video about that later down the line. Because of its history, it, it basically was almost interesting enough that it wasn't allowed back here in this country. And basically our flying colors that allowed us to get it all through and over with is the fact that this car was previously a US car. So <laughs> ignore that. We're gonna we're gonna ignore that. I don't I don't know what's up with orange Lamborghinis. It's like obviously OG Stradman fans know that his OG Aventador did the same thing. <laughs> and now mine is doing it too. And I can't even capitalize on it as an inside joke because he already freaking owns that. He is the king of the squeaky struts. I'm not gonna take that away from him. Yeah, that's the stamp right there of federal approval, so we're good to go. One Actually, one point time. Lamborghini Newport Beach. Would you look at that? Let's break down the interior because this is where stuff gets really juicy, right? We got carbon. We got carbon. 
we got carbon, we got carbon, we got carbon, 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 all of the carbon fiber that you could ever want out of this thing. It's fully loaded. We have diamond stitch orange seats. Uh, don't look at that one over there. It's a, you know, a little leather discoloration. We're just gonna ignore that. But um, seat belts in the middle of the car. I'm gonna have to get used to that a lot. And then we have oh, this weird. this weird e-brake that is on this side and basically it can go up and down like that believe it or not this e-brake is actually up and activated right now your normal car when it's you know on it stays up but this thing is uh it can also go down so that it doesn't so get in the way you, how do you getting deactivate it it so how you deactivate it is you kind of pull this stick and you press the button and then you release it oh, as you okay. do that nice. um i think it's just telling you the door is open <laughs> this thing makes a lot of aside from squeaks it makes a lot of beeps and that's what Mercilagos are known for. They're very quirky. <laughs> yeah, we are... We are out here, out here, trying to obtain this thing. More carbon with our beautiful Bizzarini V12 6.5, the last of the Bizzarini, the last of the greatest Lamborghini V12 ever made, and already coming with a full IPE Catless exhaust that this thing is uh, weaponized with down there. So I'll we'll have to deliver you guys some sound clips in a second. A little unfortunately, they couldn't deliver this thing in pristine condition. This is probably the nicest car I've ever bought. I mean, it is, <laughs> it is the nicest car I've ever bought in the worst shape. This That's thing looks so like dirty. it's been doing more mud in than the freaking Raptor has. Like what the <laughs> hell's going on here? We're going straight to a Brown Bear car wash right after this. But we do have the Hamera wheels, the premium wheels finished off in a black right here, just like how I like them. We have carbon ceramic brakes. This is gonna be a new first for me as well. Yeah. A little touchy. Um, I mean, there are so many things that are first for me with this car. First orange Ma car. First orange car, first Lamborghini. Now the most beautiful thing of it all is we have a two hour journey from here at the Canadian border or US border all the way back down to our house. And I'm going to lock the car. Doesn't make any noise when you lock it. Oh, it does. It just did. Okay, now is it gonna unlock? Oh, okay. Unlock. It's not unlocked. <laughs> you you guys heard that, right? That wasn't just me. Come on. <laughs> this would be really awkward. Imagine I just get... <laughs> yeah, right. Um, no, nah, luckily, we're just gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. Dude, I love how if you come here, this car is like fully PPF'd, and you could see the PPF cutout for the keyhole right there. <laughs> so we're gonna insert in. Is that gonna unlock? Okay, sweet. Go. Oh my god, dude. We are getting this strut fixed ASAP. One could say it builds character, but dude, this is literally the one thing that would get in the way of probably the coolest part about hopping out of your Lambo is looking very freaking flamboyant and like formal, you know, with your doors. And this just ruins absolutely all of that. <laughs> on the baby pumpkin is it just as simple as so i was i actually did try this earlier i think there's an unlock button in, in the car yeah i think i see the button shut up door no uh, <laughs> oh i'm gonna let you find it you found it already i see it oh it's right yep. here <laughs> did, it, did it pop it did yep i, I heard so. it how much does it cost to oh, fill yeah. oh this, dude we get oh, the fancy shoot. the billet <laughs> dude it's so strong know? holy crap Need some WD-40 for that too. Dude, you try okay, that. Okay. You try that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I may be weak. Holy moly. We need a wrench for this thing. Dude, why is it so... Oh, thank God. That's a nice... I wanted it to be like though. stiff enough that obviously it could have been something entertaining. That is that's such what, that, That's what she said. But 
Also, I didn't want it like stiff to the point where we wouldn't have actually gotten this off. I gotta say though, this is among the most satisfying gas gas caps? pole. Yeah, gas caps. caps. Yeah, it's probably a freaking like two thousand dollar cap. Oh, that's nice. That's beautiful. Yeah, you just can't <laughs> lose it, right? It I just kind of. Where do you put it? As she's filling up right there, I figured I would address probably the one thing that all you viewers would notice first about this car. It's missing the shift knob, <laughs> right in the middle. I don't even know why I'm really explaining this. <laughs> the internet in this era has made it almost normalized that these things come with manual transmissions. But to put it clear, if this had a manual transmission, we would be talking 600, 700, eight hundred thousand dollars literally the price of my house it was never really an option for someone of my tax bracket um now with that being said would i want one in the future yes and i know a specific person or peoples that have allocated a let's say parts list of things as well as i've seen a shop now that is also in the works of getting the third pedals involved with these cars so hopefully as people sort this stuff out, you know, in time, we could in the future at some point have a gated manual shifter in with this LP640, which I would totally take it swapped. Besides just the phenomenal driving experience alone of having a gated shifter, it makes this car 10 times more reliable because kind of the main fault about Mercy's and why this is probably gonna be the most expensive car I've ever owned is the e-gear transmission. But for now, the e-gear transmission is actually better than people say. Just been driving around today, it's been phenomenal. Even the first gear clutch engagement has been great. And of course, with the gated manual shifter, you don't get the brutal Corsa Lamborghini v12 shifts that obviously you would have with their single clutch gearbox so for now i mean we're enjoying it and it was obviously never an option so i'm ha i'm more than happy to just just have this baby now even though i got to get behind the wheel of my ultimate dream car i didn't want to get too ahead of myself just yet so i wanted to take things easy and not go too crazy on my drive home but what i will say is that this was probably one of the most emotional happy moments of my entire life. I was able to get some music playing and just sitting there cruising on the freeway and just taking in all of the thoughts and realizing what I'm in, constantly cycling through what other people get to see on the road as I'm driving this through. I, of course, like any human being, have cried before, but I have never cried out of happiness, and unfortunately, this moment still couldn't make it happen, but this is definitely the closest I'd ever been to having tears of pure joy. So... We gotta clean this thing ASAP. But I will say, the amount of attention that this thing gets on the road. I mean, I've had flashy cars before, but you go literally Hollywood Walk of Fame celebrity status in this thing. I've counted probably at least over 30 iPhones out windows, and I've literally witnessed a near collision on a truck. He didn't see all the traffic stopping in front of him. He was staring at the car and he had to literally go onto the shoulder. That's how, this thing's dangerous. It's not dangerous even just to me, to like other people around it. That's what you get when you have an orange V12 Lamborghini. What, what can I say? Do I spray that or what? Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I've never had a, the motor is just, there's nothing over it. I've never had a car like this where I don't want to just freaking flood it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is so much orange, like more orange than I thought it would be. It's your favorite color, right? Oh, <laughs> kind of. I approve. Dude. <laughs> That's wild. Oh man, this this definitely is just not hitting. <laughs> it's, this is just ain't happening. It's crazy. What do you think of the interior? Dude, I didn't even see like you didn't show me any photos of the interior. It looks look how much orange is in there. <laughs> I feel like the seats are fine. The center bit's a bit much, and there's too much on the door. There's way too much. On the it's door. too much orange for Dustin to handle. Literally, like from the front, especially, it's literally a jack o' lantern. <laughs> I know, like, yeah, it's like, I was like, it's perfect timing for all. That's what we're saying, dude. I, I'm gonna call it my pumpkin. <laughs> the coolest thing, unintentionally, is that it has a single wiper. People all be doing the single wiper mods on their like stancy JDM cars. Well, this thing literally factory single wiper, baby. Airbag. Oh, what is that? 
It's a passenger airbag. I like believe switch. it's a way that, yeah, you can probably use your key to, you airbag. could switch it off when there's a, if you want to put a car seat in there. Interesting. So that, you know, later down the line when, you know, we have this baby forever and I maybe there's a, a little uh, Jack Ultramotive sitting there. <laughs> found a funny souvenir that apparently we took with us with the car. What? A Canada only candy wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. That was just chilling under there. Yeah, I was like, oh, Dude, I man had taste. He got I the freaking, what are these, the Nestle aero these, arrows? Man. They are gas. Yes. These are phenomenal. <laughs> Welp, she is in the garage for the very first time. And I gotta say, she is a big girl. This is Big Bertha the pumpkin right here because, um, I mean, honestly, having a 240 sit next to it is the perfect comparison. Dude, Zach, I was just telling him, this thing is huge. Yeah, like, is. like, if you look at it from here, this is this thing's massive. It's, it's right. literally about as big as the Camaro is. Just, it's just low, but it is, it's very wide, and the mirrors make it very wide, too. Unfortunately, we got to get rid of the S14 as well um it'll help us out with maintaining this car there's never enough money you can have to own a merce lago because now that we actually own it you know we did the hard part but you know it's definitely gonna rack up some maintenance bills i'm sure of and honestly what would make me so happy to see is to have the camaro live in here because then we truly would have three crazy genres jdm exotic and american muscle all in arguably the most peak of forms all sitting together in one garage. I wanna end this video off on a statement for you guys. I don't know if anyone watching this video needs to hear this. I often wonder how my influence is affected on other people out there. At the end of the day, all I really think about is just entertaining people with automotive content. But you guys will always leave awesome, nice comments saying how I'm an inspiration and it's really hard to wrap my head around that. However, with this car, I've truly learned to understand that I'm really just some average kid that was just making Forza videos, making vlogs about his cars, going to car shows, all of that. And it's truly just led to me being able to purchase something as crazy as that. I've learned to realize that my route to obtaining these cars is really something that any of you guys watching this video can do. I genuinely didn't have any financial head start. I never had any crazy talents or special skill sets. I was just genuinely passionate about creating videos. Now I know it sounds cheesy, but your guys' passions could be your biggest strengths. Whatever it is out there, whether it be cars, game, Whatever it is out there for you guys, whether it be cars, gaming, or sports, go utilize your passions, find a way to monetize them. That'll give you your best odds at being dedicated to whatever you're doing. And if you ever reach a spike, something that just triggers off, pops off, does really well. For example, with video creating for me, it would be if a random video out of all the videos not doing well, a random one all of a sudden just happens to go viral, well, look into the pattern of it. Look into why it went viral and repeat that. Build on top of that. Take advantage of that. Milk that out a little bit and work your way up the staircase and you genuinely have no idea where that can possibly take you. It could take you to completely crazy places. So yeah, if you really break it down, I'm just some Forza gaming guy that now has a Lamborghini in his garage and I really want to at least try and express that out to you guys that any of you guys watching this could really be that random person out there that could very well do the exact same thing. So on that note, thank you guys so much for everything you've ever done for me. Thank you guys always for watching, but this is gonna be Jack Ultramotive signing this vlog off. Dude, I just got this thing. He's getting Canada? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. So you're familiar with the channel? Yeah, I've seen Dude. a few years ago. Yeah. Dude, literally, yeah. You're yeah. you're the first follower. <laughs> Yeah. To have seen this baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> right on. It matches, bro. Orange on orange. Picante. Picante. Right? Yeah, dude. Well, cool, man. We're about to head, head back down to Washington. Hell yeah. I couldn't imagine, like, someone who's followed along, and you're just seeing me with this, like, oh, I can explain. 